Hello, everybody, and welcome to 20-somethings. I'm your host tonight, Lionel Jeffries, and I'm joined by my good friends, Michael, uh, sorry, Macy, Michael's not here, Macy and Brian, and we will be talking tonight about COVID-19 and the ongoing 2020 elections, a lot going on in the world right now. So thanks for being here, and we'll dive right in with the election updates. So what we've been seeing is actually pretty consistent lately with the race between former Vice President Joe Biden and current President Donald Trump. Um, Joe Biden continues to enjoy a significant lead in the polls. However, it's dangerous deja vu for many Democrats because uh, they'll remember that four years ago, Hillary Clinton was in a somewhat similar position where the polls by and large had her winning. Um, and of course, we all know how that went. Um, the only real shift we've seen in the polls in the past, say, 24 hours is now uh, Donald Trump has been closing the, the polling gap a bit in Pennsylvania, which is one of the key swing states. Uh, for the most part, Joe Biden continues to, he leads nationwide by about 10 points in most polls. And on top of this, uh, he and Donald Trump are head and head in traditional red states even, uh, such as North Carolina. Um, so it's a very, it's shaping up to be a very competitive election still. Um, Joe Biden does have the advantage for now, but uh, despite that, it's still really a toss up at this point. It could swing either way. So I wanna ask Macy and Brian what they think of the election. Do you guys think Joe Biden is definitely gonna win? Uh, is this gonna go the same as 2016 where Trump can win the right states and pull a, a surprise victory? So what do you guys think? I really believe that um, it's really um, up in the air. Like I feel it's going back and forth. I feel how, um, Trump was behaving and um, reacting to his uh, COVID-19 positive um, test. Um, I believe that he really didn't behave very well like when he found out he was being, he was positive and like it really, set, I feel like it set people back. And I feel like Biden really has like kind of a lead right here but we can't really tell what's gonna happen. It's all up in the air that I can see. Yeah, I think it is really interesting. Uh, Brian, what, what do you think about the polls and the direction the election is heading in? Me, I feel like, I feel like with this election going on right now, I feel like Biden probably has the advantage because with Trump getting COVID, it's like, it's like people are like backlash and they're like, oh no, like our president has COVID. It's like, now nah, we go support again Joe Biden because he's more, more of a COVID responsibility than Trump is. But like, you know, with this time so unpredictable, like we can never expect to come like, you know, four years ago, we, we everyone assumed that Hillary was going to win the election when in reality, it was like a surprise fix for Donald Trump. And um, so who knows that this year could possibly be the same route where, you know, Trump could be winning by a surprise for some reason. But, you know, it, that could that probably could happen just like it was four years ago. So very troublesome indeed. Yeah, you never know what, what way the wind could blow. I mean, it's we live in such unpredictable times. And one thing we've seen is just how volatile and how quickly these politics can change. So it'd be very interesting to see how it plays out. But one of the things you guys both mentioned is the major importance of COVID-19 politically during the election um, with all the controversy surrounding the Trump administration's handling of it and with Trump himself getting sick, which brings us now to Macy. Um, how is this second wave of COVID impacting the world? And frankly, what is it? What is the second wave of COVID? Well, right now, um, in many parts of the world, cases of COVID-19 are either declining or others are really seeing some spikes. Um, the pandemic is still evolving. Doctors, public health experts, and researchers are trying to answer both tough questions. When will this first wave be over? And will there be a second wave of COVID-19 in the fall? Um, on the upside, we do know uh, much more about viruses and public health and science is able to devise targeted treatments and vaccines. Hopefully we will soon get a vaccine. The biggest risk scientists say is uh, a loosening of social distancing measures. So people really need to keep these uh, COVID-19 guidelines um, at one of their top priorities. So we are able to get a vaccine as fast as we can. Um, a much larger portion of the economy today is engaged in consumer-driven 
um, commerce, such as the restaurant and entertainment sector. So things are starting to open up again. And with restrictions, it's still a pretty high risk. Um, even if the public state uh, public place is very um, high traffic, um, they always encourage you to stay out of the high traffic areas. It is known that a second wave is upon us, but we are not sure when it will start and or how long it will really be. And um, there's also talk in Rhode Island that Gina Raimondo wants to go back a phase to phase two because of the rising cases throughout Rhode Island. And I wanted to just ask you guys, like, how do you think, um, what do you think about this? And do you think that um, uh, she'll go back to phase two? Phase two is more of like restaurants being just takeout, no dine-in. Um, a lot of things will be closed that weren't open before. And do you think like a lot of restaurants will flip over to delivery services or just drive-through services? Um, to tell you guys this, um, I feel like phase two, maybe in my opinion, I should say it should happen, but probably when we reach the colder season, because one, one thing I want to say is that when the, the COVID-19 COVID is greatest risk at the cold season, which is winter. So it's like, if this happened, if COVID-19 is still happening with no cure going on, then it's like, we're all going to be at risk while we're in these in places during phase three. So I feel like if winter, when by around like Christmas or maybe like New Year's or after ends, like we should go back to phase two, like everyone just like, if they want to eat, like they have to get in the car, like, or like maybe eat outside, but like obviously we can't eat outside because you know, it's too cold. So you have the only option is eat in the car. So I think it's best to like to close, make everything like all dining, like all takeout or like drive through or like curbside or DoorDash. Pretty much anything that affects there should definitely keep us not only safe, but also warm as well. So, protection. What kind of effect do you guys think that, um, Lionel, what kind of effect do you think the um, it will have on businesses? Um, I think that you're going to see backlash from businesses because they're probably making significantly more money now than they were during phase two. Um, and you can also definitely expect public outcry that people are unhappy about the measures we have in place as is. And, you know, the, the longer this goes on, like regardless of, you know, what the scientific community says, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, people are going to be up in arms about more rules restricting uh, free movement in society. Um, you know, people are just getting more and more fed up as this goes on. Um, so I think that that will also translate to businesses because, you know, again, regardless of the morality uh, or the scientific side of it, people want to go into restaurants, they want to be living life more normally uh, than, you know, going backwards uh, into further quarantine restrictions, even if that's what we need according to the scientific community. So that is basically the state of where uh, COVID is at in terms of um, further restrictions and a possible uh, political response in the near future. Now, that's just kind of what's going on right now and what could happen very soon. But a much bigger question we still have that applies to everybody is, where are we gonna be a year from now? Are we gonna have vaccines? What's it gonna look like? So now I'll give it to Brian to tell us a bit more about where we might be in the, near, in the distant future. Thank you, Lionel. So before I get started on the vaccine trial, I do want to say that like right now, COVID-19 cases are like spiking across the world. And to me, for that reason, it's not because because we're like limited to large gatherings. It's because the small gatherings are the reasons for this cause of the COVID-19 spikings. So it's, it's possible like future Halloween parties, family gatherings or hangouts or even future holiday gatherings are obviously the reasons why these COVID-19 cases are going up. So because, and for that reason also, it's because there's no mask wearing and there's no so distant. And with, with, with no mask, you're most likely gonna get the COVID-19. And, um, but there is one new case that says that people who have a blood type of zero are less vulnerable to the COVID-19. So that's pretty interesting. And that also means that they're less likely to get sick from COVID-19 as well, if they do get it with the blood type, is, if their blood type is zero. But speaking of that, about this COVID-19 vaccine, um, there's a new trial called Solidarity, where many got together to become part of the COVID-19 of, of the COVID-19 vaccine trial. So people are, are volunteering to 
take themselves part on helping helping the researchers and scientists to help find this virus vaccine, vaccine ASAP because their goal is to get the vaccine by the end of 2020 or maybe uh, as soon as possible. So, so far, Redesivir, hydrochloroquine, uh, retinovir, and interferon have little or no effect on the vaccine, which means updates for the COVID-19 vaccine will be made soon. However, the larger portion of people are volunteering to get vaccine, the more likely they're going to find the vaccine very sooner, which is good. And so far, over 116 countries have joined a trial meeting for the COVID-19 vaccine that can be found earlier as possible. And so far in America, two American companies said that they're hoping for approval on the COVID-19 vaccine by the end of the late November. So who knows that after this election and after this Thanksgiving, we will probably see a vaccine be released by the end of November. But even with that said, um, the the two companies are Pittsburgh will apply emergency authorized use in the U.S. soon after the season milestone is achieved in the third week of November. So possibly maybe the third week or maybe like the last week of November, we will get that vaccine and it will take months for, uh, even with the vaccine still available, it might take months, like months to make the whole vaccine because they have to make not only like a thousands like, or like millions, they have to make so much. And like, you know, first responders have to get a vaccine first. You know, they're, the important, they're like the most important people that are most vulnerable to the viruses. And I'm saying like, you know, all the people that are at risk from COVID-19, they have, to, they have to be the ones that have to get the vaccine. And so my question for you guys is that, do you think we as like around like the age of 20s or 30s should get the vaccine like first or less? Like, what do you guys think about that? Um, I think that we need to get it last. I think we need to prioritize protecting our elders and beyond just age. I, I think we need to be prioritizing um, those who are most vulnerable. So even if you're young, and you've got some kind of uh, physical ailment, um, some kind of special condition that makes you more vulnerable than the rest of us. I think we just need to help who needs it first. Um, and uh, you know, us young people who are lucky enough to be uh, physically fit and healthy, that um, we should pretty much be the last to get it. And I'm also gonna go out on a limb and say that a lot of like, college students, unfortunately, are not going to be proactive in trying to get this thing anyway. So they really shouldn't be prioritized. I agree. I also want to um, add on how you said we should get it last and let the elders go first. I also think it's important to let first responders um, get a vaccination first too as well so they can still be out there and staying strong and um, also, going back to your um, social distancing aspect, um, being in small gatherings like isn't just like 20 people or 30 people. It's really like a m maximum of 15 people or less. Like I know when I'll have um, my team over, I'll do about, about 10 of them at most just because our house is small and we don't want like to be exposed too much to um, certain people. Cause even as a team right now, I'm not being able to see most of my teammates or contact, like have contact with them throughout practice or throughout the school day or week, just because of these restrictions. Um, another question for you guys is, um, would you, even if the vaccine comes out, would we see ourselves still in the same position everything like online or like even stuck at home within next year would you guys see yourself in that same position as like following the guidelines all that um unfortunately yes i think that this new living situation we're in is going to be around longer than people expect or definitely longer than people would like so i think it's something we're all kind of gonna have to get used to and whether or not um and education is worth it over Zoom, or if it can still even be called an education, I think that's another topic altogether. I believe that um, we will probably be in some sort of like online um, environment in about the next year or so, I agree, but um, you never know, maybe it could be lifted a little bit, maybe it could get worse and it would be more of a strict rule um also like in the next year or so it's going to affect a lot of jobs out there and a lot of people graduating from college or anywhere and trying to get a job out there 
especially with all these restrictions and only having certain people in the workplace and certain people online, it's very hard to get in touch with all these um, interviews and these opportunities um, just so people can have a normal, normal life. That like, you know, if we happen to still see ourselves stuck in this position, like, you know, we might see like some bankruptcies happening in places like people getting laid off in their jobs maybe even teachers in like middle school, middle school or high school, or elementary school, they're gonna try to get laid off because, you know, they're like afraid of be teaching just because they wanna be protecting themselves from COVID. So like, you know, it's honestly a dangerous situation we're living, but you know, let's just see what happens in the future life. All right, so that is definitely a lot to leave us to think about tonight, but that's the show. Thank you, Macy, thank you, Ryan. Thank you everybody for being here. And we hope that you have a great night. Stay safe, everybody. And make sure you vote come November.